Today's episode of The Watch is brought to you by Jaguar, the art of performance. To learn more about the all new Jaguar XE, visit jaguarusa.com. I need support staff to clear the room. Stand up and walk. Now. Hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Watch. My name is Chris Ryan. I am an editor at TheRinger.com. I'm joined as always by Andy Greenwald in this house of mirrors. A hall of mirrors. Hall of mirrors. Hall of mirrors. You don't know your we are joined by Sam Esmail. Guys, this is his, this is history in the making right here. This is really big. I this feel is like. thank uh, you. groundbreaking. <laughs> thank you for joining us. You joined us thank twice you for in one having week, me. first of all. I know, thank this you. is the I most mean... we've ever had a guest on in one week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm glad to be that record breaker. Thank you for making the time for us. Congratulations, the end of the thank season, you. Mr. Robot, last night. It was last night, yeah. We are going to talk about the episode in depth. You yeah. said you just wanted to recap it. You just well, to I mean, yeah, you just no, want to have I want a regular episode of I the want watch. Just a watch episode. And then I talk, let's talk about Atlanta and how brilliant yeah. that We're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to talk about, let's do a little rundown. We're going to talk about last night's finale. Right. Is, it, is this technically a re-up or is this, this a... This is a re-up, but it's like when you're okay. on, it's you, like okay. a special edition. I wanted edition. to be the... Oh, yeah, okay. It's a special right, episode special of the watch. You get a special, very, you get a very <laughs> special episode. We're going to learn about... I feel so much better. ...what happened in the garage. It's going to be okay. We're going to work through it. Last night's episode, we're going to talk about the season overall. We're okay. going to talk about things we've said about the season overall, which you've important. heard. Yeah, I, which here, I have heard. You're here in the room for. Yes. And then we're going to have a regular episode of The Watch, which I guess means we'll, we'll go crazy over. over Atlanta and Kanye West and um, talk about the casting decisions and yeah, Stranger Yeah, maybe things. any movies you've <laughs> caught up on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some movies. I don't fly anymore. Okay, we got to get right into it. Last okay, night, let's do it. season two ended. Yes. Um, first question is, is a pretty obvious one. Did you have to Google the predatory habits of pythons, or is that mm. just something you knew? God, that, uh, that's, a, that's a good opener. Thank you, um, yeah. I, I think there was some Wikipedia in Was that. there? Well, I always I always remembered that, that would be a great title for an episode, and, you know, yeah. Python's obviously, you know, a programming language. But then... The, See, no, no, I didn't. I didn't know well, that. It's a, <laughs> I no there you idea. go. You're, you're, lear, you're learning. Right this is not um, the tech podcast. Um, and, well, and so anyway, so, like, you know, when I thought about, well, where is this going to fit, and, you know, and because some, sometimes, you know, the, the, the tail wags the dog when you think about episode titles. You, you kind of want to want them to fit into a certain episode. And it wasn't really fitting. And I already had another episode title for the f finale. So I, I was like, well, well, we'll do it for season three. And the more we got into it and the more we got into that last episode, I realized that the whole season was that. It was that whole yeah. people were lying in wait. I mean, you know, Mr. Robot, you know, Joanna, uh, uh, obviously Dom. So, so it all kind of made sense. And, that's sort of why we went with that. Was the original title for the finale, Elliot Gets Shot JPEG? <laughs> you know what? I will tell it to you, and I'm a little embarrassed by it. Okay. Because it's so lame in hindsight now. <laughs> yeah, okay. But it, it was titles and deeds. And I remember I pitched it. Oh, I was like, no, it's, it's titles. You, you like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think, <laughs> look, you, like you, you like it better. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sitting next to you right Shit, now. He's can, like, maybe I can change it still. No one checked their DVR. Well, maybe I can... Maybe Nobody watched the finale. Nobody watched the finale. We'll just redo it. No, I, I, I think we can probably, I think it's probably out there. Huh. Yeah, yeah. You could save it's it for next bad. season. Save it for next season. Um, Did you have, like, is that an actual FBI tactic, the Python yeah. approach? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, the man in the middle was an actual tactic. Okay. Because the, the idea is, is that, uh, you know, they don't want, if that person has sensitive information that they need, and so that therefore they don't want that person knowing that they're on to them. Yeah. They'll want to sort of let, like, really kind of stay back and, and, and surveil all the people until they can get to him without, without him knowing that they're good. Yeah, because all that him. stuff with the we waited, we waited, I mean, that's, a lot of that is like a looming tower, and it's a lot of the investigations about 9-11 leading up to it where they were allowing these things mm -hmm. to sort of play yeah. themselves out. Well, I mean, the bin Laden search was a lot, yeah. a lot like that. I mean, where they could have captured all these lieutenants, and but they didn't, you know, kind of hoping that it would lead back to him. So did the, rev the revelation last night that there was, like all FBI agents have a good whiteboard, right. um, the revelation right. that all these people were on the board all along, does that make us, does that put Dom's role the season in a different light? Because, you know, just the other week when we did the Hacking Robot, I was talking to Grace, that one of the questions was, why has no one listened to her? Why has, well, she seems to know who did this and no one is listening. Did we, was that a misdirect? Because clearly, or, and meaning, was that a misdirect meaning she wanted to jump the gun? Or we were just didn't we just didn't have the full. No, picture. she she didn't want to jump the gun. In fact, there's language in there in in the I think eighth or ninth episode where Santiago after they get hacked and the yeah. video gets released, 
they're like, this slow approach isn't working anymore. We're going to have to go guns blazing. Right. And then that's when they sort of shift gears. But I guess it does shed some of her behavior in a different light. Right. right. So like, if you know that she is basically on a knife's edge waiting for these these people to make the mistake that they can pounce on. It explains some of the insomnia. It explains exactly. some of the inability to ever really truly the be in her life. the are still out right. there. Yeah, right. Because right. she knows what's coming. It's a 24, extent. yeah, exactly. There's a devotion on the show to, there's a commitment to your ideas that I find very admirable. It, but I feel like sometimes you might be writing yourself into more and more difficult corners, right? Because last season, you did the hack and uh, Tyrell immediately became the most wanted human being in the world, which made his presence in the season very difficult. Right. Something you address by not really having him right. present on the season. Similarly, in the beginning of season one, when Elliot does this stuff to Lenny, there is a consequence to it. Right. And he's in prison, as we found out, this right. season. Um, going into the next season, you already have more of these set up now, because how does Darlene get away? She is in custody, which right. seems very unlikely that she's going to have her freedom back again. Right. Elliot has a bullet inside of him. Right. That's problematic. That's, that's pretty problematic. <laughs> Do you... We're going to have to address that. Yeah, I feel I like it's going to come I up. I think. Or we could yada, yada, yada. Yeah, do you? It. I mean, it's Mr. Robot. We kind of do whatever the hell we want. Um, no, up. no. I mean, honestly, you know, the, the thing that I love about what we did in this season is we, we do address it, but we find that we find interesting ways to address it. Like the, the hack and the three days that kind of uh, Elliot doesn't remember it, that ended the first season. I mean, we, we kind of, I, again, I always look at the season, or I always look at the show as like we're pulling back from a picture. And we're, all, you know, and as we pull back, every step we take, we're seeing more and more of it. And the more we see, the more things change of what, of what our understanding is. And that's sort of how I wanted to tell the story. So it, this is, you know, look, we could have done a more straightforward narrative, right? Where, the, where it's stage two and let's say, and I would never do this because I think this would be terrible, but if Elliot in the first <laughs> episode of this season was like, yeah, I'm seeing a guy and he's, I guess, my other personality, but I gotta do the stage two hack and let's ignore that and let's just go plot, 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 and then end, right. on, uh, end on whatever stage two is gonna end up being. Um, but that to me was never an interesting way, to, an interesting storytelling approach, as I guess I would say. I guess the, interesting, would say. the question there would be then, so if you've got this picture and you're showing different quadrants of the picture and right. zooming out and zooming in at different times, do you always know the whole picture? Yes. So did you have the Tyrell Elliott conversation written last year or like written last season and you knew you were eventually going to shoot it like that for this season? Yes. Okay. You're talking about what, the way it yeah. ended with Tyrell and Elliot. I pr pretty much the big markers for the whole series, I think we've got pretty figured out. Okay. It's it's the details will change and the you know the the, you know, the, obviously, sort of some of, some of the character sub, subplots, you know, will develop and change and go in different directions. But, but in terms of having a dock on your computer with Alf in it, that's been there for like five, six See, years. See, no, so that's something I, I, I could never have done alone. That's right. something <laughs> that the crazy people in my writer's room uh, and I would have to like figure out together. And, and that's the stuff that kind of uh, billows up in the, in the room. You know, one of the things that I will say is that because we have this reality or surreality to the show that gives us a lot of creative freedom, if you will, to go in all these like wacky adventures. So I personally do not believe in like, you know, we have the markers, we know the answers. Yeah. So we're not like, it's not like we're like just billowing up mystery just for right. the sake of billowing up mystery. But in between those markers, we get we get to have a lot of fun. But that's a very different, it feels like it's a fine line because, you know, you're, you're, you're directing every episode of the yeah. show now. You're running the show. You're right. writing or rewriting or co-writing much of the show. It's coming from a, from work you had previously done as a as a feature screenplay. To have that level of control, which is a bigger issue in general, because it's apparently control is an, apparently yeah. it's an illusion. Theme. Yeah. Um, but sometimes but, you can use that. No, never mind. <laughs> you, sometimes you can use your illusion too. Sometimes, but which is a good. We should discuss that too. Let's just add it to the list, Chris. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're going to be here for a while. You have this level of control, but you also have to have the lighter touch to allow things like, in this case, Alf, right. to bubble up onto the show and have a place there. And I, that's my favorite thing about the show is that you never know which direction it's going to go. And I, I really, really it makes me very happy when Alf appears on an Emmy Award winning. <laughs> Show that is not Alf. I do remember us shooting that scene that day, and, I, and it was, I, I honest, honest to God, I think it was maybe two days after we got the nomination, and I was kind of <laughs> looking over, because my, my other EPs were there, and I was like, hey, 
you know, we just got nominated for Am I pissing all over drama. this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know I mean? And I've got Paul Fusco on the floor of a red, you know, Corvette, like, you know. <laughs> and then we kind of all, at the same time, yeah. we're like, this is amazing. Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. This is what you should be using yeah, the, exactly. the platform for. You know, you talk a little bit about this idea that if you wanted to, you could have done a straightforward version of yeah. the show. And I think even in the earlier parts of the first season, there is this... You can see the framework for what the the traditional USA Network version of this would have been with a hack of the week, where there's like a villain that right. Elliot brings down while there's like an overarching right. narrative. But it was funny to hear you bring, like to hear Burn Notice get brought up last night. Right. That, that was was that good. funny? It was funny, and I, I and I I was wondering like whether or not when you're writing the second season, when you're going through this process, how much of it is a reaction to it it's still being a television show. Because I think a lot of the questions people brought up this season were about the pacing, were about the length of the episodes, were about right. how long a scene would go on versus traditionally how long that scene would go on if it was a burn notice scene. Right. So like, when you're making this, how, how aware are you of like TV conventions? Well, so, he, and, he, and this, is, this is, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, the honest answer to that is I'm not aware. Okay. Because I'm, again, I've never done this. I've never been in a TV writer's room. Um, and then I get told, you know, like the opening to episode, I'm going to call episode three, which is um, the, in, it, in it one episode, uh, we open with a scene between Darlene and Elliot. It's a flashback yeah. in their apartment. Um, and it's, I think, about 12 minutes yeah. long. And it's the two of them smoking weed, watching a movie, and catching up. That is ridiculous. That's a ridiculous in a feature that's definitely ridiculous in a television show. Um, and there's no there's no sense of there's no sense of drama necessarily. Obviously, there there's there are things that get revealed, um, but there's not they're not going toe to toe or anything like that. It's honestly just sort of a, 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 a kind of a these two reuniting, and we watched the scene, um, and you know it was it was actually longer. I think it was like 60 minutes long. We trimmed it down, trimmed it down, got it to a certain point. We watched the scene. We were like. We really like it, yeah. And honestly, at the, at the end of the day, it's like, well, but we can't have a twelve minute and then the t title card. Yeah. What the hell? You can't do that. Um, but we really like it. I don't know. Like Carly's amazing. Rami's amazing. This, there's something interesting about what's happening in the scene. There's something underneath that's going on that you you don't quite know. There's a lot of subtext to that scene. And so what we did was, and that that episode in particular was pretty long. It was, it was about sixty four minutes, sixty three minutes. So I was like, look, and I, you know, like, I'm actually a guy, believe it or not, that does not love long episodes <laughs> purely because <laughs> Do I, tell. Yeah. well, here, here's what I'll say, purely because I don't, I don't like falling asleep halfway through and being like, fuck, now I got to watch it the next I, day. It would be amazing if like all through this, this season, you had been like, are you fucking kidding me, Night Elf? <laughs> <laughs> 58 well, minutes, can, bro? Can I, <laughs> let, me, let me say this. One of my favorite TV shows this year was the OJ doc. Yeah. Did you guys watch this? Yeah. Oh, the, the doc, the, the not doc, the FX the series, doc, yes, Made in America. Made in America. Do you know how long those episodes were? Yeah. They're, they're like 90 minutes each. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't care that they're 90 minutes. The only reason why I cared was I basically fell asleep every night at the 45 minute mark. But you know, you then know I what you're to, saying. Like, you do that annoying thing where you have to rewind. Like, I don't remember this yeah. part because it went 10 minutes after, you know, you have to rewind yeah. and figure it out. That, that's the, honestly the only reason why. But otherwise, it was great. I mean, this weird thing, I remember uh, I, re I read a review of the night of the season finale, which is also 90 minutes yeah. long, where they were like, why didn't they just split it up into two? And I, for the life of me, do not, uh, why don't you just pause it at 45 minutes and go take, back take to it break. the <laughs> week later if you want to do that? Like, I don't get this need to break think, up running time. I think time. there's this assumption now that we've given so much control over the entertainment experience that the one thing that we still feel some sort of fidelity to is how it was presented to us. Right. You know that it has to be, this was, Absolutely. this is how it was meant to sure. be. We read the instructions on the back. <laughs> it said rinse, repeat, question mark. Sure. So we did it. Sure. Um, but I think what Chris is getting at is an interesting point because I think there are people who make TV and follow TV conventions and TV conventions are powerful and, and, right. and conventions for a reason and often popular. There are people who make TV and aggressively flout those conventions having often like worked in the convention minds you know, like someone like Matt Weiner, who was on staff at Becker and then made Mad Men, made a right. very different kind of show. Right. I think it's worth noting that I don't, 
think you are even paying attention to the convention. No. You're kind I mean, of just making it up. Right. I'm kind of just going with what feels right. What fe and, and by the way, that's not to say that I'm the end all be all. Because what, let me to just finish that story. So then I showed that episode. I was like, it's, it's, it's long. And we had just done a 62 minute episode uh, the, the previous week. So I said, L let me just show it to people. Okay. They're going to tell me that first scene, you cut it down to six yeah. minutes. It's not resonating. Because yeah. I, look, I can admit when I'm like, maybe I'm too in love with something and, you know, and, and I got you know, to cut my losses or whatever. Everybody at the network loved it. I show it to all the editors, I show it to all my all the assistant editors. Mm -hmm. I was literally begging people to tell me what don't you like right. about this. And then everybody was just like, no, this is good, solid go. And then I was like, okay, great. And then we release it. And then everybody else told me that they hated it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, that, and that's kind of how I mean, no, I mean, all jokes aside, like that's sort of what happens. And I don't know if we're in a bubble or whatever, but then other people would then chime in and say, but it, but then even that then because I because I read all the reviews and I read all the criticism, you, you for example I mean I, I, I uh, maybe I'm jumbling episodes <laughs> but you for example didn't love uh, the throwing up right the girl am I, yeah. is that right in, the, yeah, in, that, in that episode you didn't love that that whole sequence and with with the picking the pills out yeah of the vomit yeah and yeah that. and you thought that went on too long or whatever I, I, maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm not right about that it's fair to assume I don't love people picking pills but out of you vomit, loved. Yeah. The Porsche, or I'll say Angela Philip Price scene at the restaurant. Loved it. Loved it. Seppenwall, you read, read Seppenwall's yeah. review, the exact opposite. That's good Why? for our brands, though, to go in different directions. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. So then it's like you get these differing. <laughs> This is this is we're we're, we're being making, honest now. We're making very good podcasts. <laughs> we're making extra <laughs> podcasts. But, but it's true that, it, that it's purely subjective. But I I want to get I do want to go back to some specifics of the finale. But since we're already talking about it. In terms of the running time, um, the the thing that was interesting to me about it is that the beginning of the season there were the longer episodes, and then you tweeted at one point, yeah, basically like a half apology for that. The second half of the season, the episodes were more more traditional running length. Right. Was any of that by design, or was that a part of this pretty unprecedented um, block shooting, editing? Uh, You're directing every episode, yes. System no, that you had set up. No, it had nothing to do with that. It really had to do with, the, the, in those episodes, what I would have cut for time w would have sacrificed too much in the table setting in the early episodes. Right. Whereas when I, we start getting into the season, scenes that I loved but didn't really need uh, were, were more apparent and I could cut that and put it in the deleted scenes on the DVD. Right. So it was like, it, in the beginning, it was just tough because I couldn't really maneuver that much because if I cut certain scenes, then... It affects everything It else. affects everything else, yeah. A um, couple more points on the finale before we move on to the stuff that we're already clearly talking about. <laughs> because we have to be servicey. We have to yes, talk about yes, the finale. Yes, we, we do, we do. I was happy. I don't, know about, I don't know if Chris was happy. Look at his face. <laughs> I mean, he does not look happy. I was happy. This is not a happy yeah, guy. I'm having the time of my life. But you know what I like more? I, I, like, I like Scott Knowles. I like uh, Brian well, Stokes I, Mitchell. He's an amazing actor. He's amazing. And I really appreciated that that twist. And that you know, it's interesting. That won't even be called a twist because it wasn't like some meta reality right. warping reveal right. that a sad drunk guy was messing with someone. Right. Um, that he was sending the messages to, to Joanna. But one of the reasons why I really like that is because, for as much as you are doing these things on the show that you know you're, you're tearing down global financial systems and questioning reality, someone was killed in season one. And that death resonated. I right. appreciated that that wasn't just like a yada yada Tyrell's a villain, we don't right. really care. Right. That had a really agonizing effect on someone. And right. it was interesting that you chose this moment, a finale, there's a lot of attention on a finale, to remind us of that fact. Right. I, I mean, you know, one of the big things about this season were, cons you know, that we wanted to really deal with the consequences of what these people did in the first right. season. And, you know, because he wasn't in this season that long doesn't mean that we still can't deal with the consequences of what Terrell yeah, did. Yeah, one thing you could definitely say about the second season is that in some ways it's, it is a PTSD st season, right? Like everybody in it is dealing right. with all the trauma that they went through the, f right. the first season, right, for right, sure. Right, right, right. A um, couple more points. Um, Elliot shot. Yes. That happened. That did happen. That's real. That is very real. Okay. The, the uh, phase two, the explosion of a major skyscraper. Just small correction. Yeah. Don't ask me why, but it's actually stage two. Stage two, I'm sorry. Phase two is coming in season four. <laughs> because it's very linear thinking. <laughs> stage two, as far as we know, did not happen yet. We don't know. It did not happen right. yet. Or you can confirm that it did I not happen. I can confirm it did so not happen. So that brown out, that's a, just a brown out at the that, last that's shot. The thing that we've been, that's the thing we've been building up to. Yeah. Okay. Those are happening. The, those flickering, yeah. 
can you say how much time elapsed between Elliot getting shot, Mr. Robot flickering out, and Angela getting the phone call? This is my big question. That I cannot answer. Okay, okay. but that's an important question yes, to know. Yes, it is an important question. So we don't, so it's, it's possible to, it's, I don't want to say assume, it's possible to, to wonder if Angela, the last time we saw Angela when she had had this remarkable experience playing Zork <laughs> in a dark room with a child, um, to the steely person who is talking to Tyrell on the phone, that that's not like tomorrow. That wasn't the nece- it wasn't necessarily just the next day. Right. But we can assume that Elliot is waking up. Correct. He is not dead. You're not threatening I'm the not death s- of your Emmy winning. No, absolutely <laughs> not. I think that's a safe assumption. Yes. Um, finally, the post credit scene. Yes. Um, One of my favorite scenes. Where was that? Can you tell us where it was, or is it tied to a place? Is that a real store? Well, I'll just say that it, well, Mobley talks about it a lot. His buddy in Arizona is a buddy in Arizona. Oh, oh. His buddy. See, I thought, yeah, okay. I thought it was California, but. I did too. Um, no, the California one, Fry's, you know, always has those themes. Oh, yeah. The California one, you, were, you mean the one in Burbank? Yeah. I, I saw a lot of reviews talk they about that. It's Burbank, yeah. The Burbank one is actually a UFO, so it is not the same. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. The, the emergence of Mobley and Trenton as. Major, uh, semi-major characters, yeah. important characters, yeah. was a surprise, not an unwelcome one, because I like those actors, I like those characters and what they bring to the show. Great. Um, this suggests an important role for them going forward, is that fair to say? Yes. And Leon's back. We're thrilled with that. I'm not going to get rid of Joey Badass. You can't do that. You can't. No. I mean, I w- I've wanted him since the first season, so... Right, you- now that I have him, you're not going to let him go. I'm not letting him go. Is he fine with that? How does he feel about his new? He he an loves actor? it. I mean, I I didn't know this until I met him, but apparently he wanted to be an actor. That's the first thing he wanted to do. Oh, right? oh that's really cool. And he kind of like did this whole, you know, rapping <laughs> this rapping thing. thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's great. I mean, he's great at it. Can how would you describe the nature of his approach? Is he does he come in friendship or? Not friendship? Well, I can't answer that. That I yeah, can't. but I can ask well, you. So we've sure. had, there are some theories. I mean, I know he can't say anything about this, but because of the, what he asks, which is, do you have the time? It's a very white rosy kind of thing. It's a very white rosy kind of thing, yeah. Sam agrees. This is, he's forgetting this is mostly an audio <laughs> medium. <laughs> but for those listening Silence to this as, as a podcast. <laughs> um, okay, so let's, so that's, that's, that's last night's finale. Right. Um, in other, other like just house cleaning stuff, are you back? You're not back in a room yet for season no. three. That'll happen in about two weeks. So wow. you've already shot something for season three. Is that what I heard? Who are you talking to? I think Rami said that in an interview, not with me. <laughs> That's funny. I should. I, I, <laughs> I just get Rami I'm in not trouble? commenting on this. Okay, you don't have to but yes, you, you did get. Can I, I, I have a question though about. So you've got this Emmy-winning star. Yeah. Um, Who's brilliant? There's a full, of course, there's like a full episode that he is absent from for the most part. And then there is one that he's like 80% absent from, correct? And you're talking about making um, Mobley and Trenton into bigger characters possibly. And and television shows disperse as they go on. Correct. How much, how hard is it to not go iso- Rami, like you get the ball all the time. These are basketball terms, by the way. Chris is trying to bait you. I, I, yeah, I, this, apparently I don't know anything about this. I, so, what is this? He walked into it. By the way. He wanted to mention it again. No, but like, how hard is it to not play with your like your your most your, expensive toy? Your kind of point thing? guard. Yeah. Right. Um, it's. I mean, that. I let me just let me just say this. When I started writing this as a feature. It was Elliot all day long, every every scene, basically. That was the story. And then when that first whatever, when I started writing that first act and went to 90 pages and I wasn't even a quarter of the way through the first act, the reason why that happened was because I started being more interested in the other characters. Okay. And that that was what happened was like, well, wait a minute. I want to tell Darlene, I want to go in this Darlene direction. I think Angela could be really fascinating and Terrell. And that's when I realized, oh, this isn't, it, it can't be two hours. Because as much as I love my Elliot character, I love all these other worlds and all these other possibilities. And the way that's going to affect and empower and also de- detract from Elliot. Yeah. Like, I love the way that, that inner, and that's why I think that's sort of the beauty of TV. Is that Absolutely. You, that's really the only but Tiny you're you're just in such a specific situation because so much of what you're doing is through his point of view. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it must be like you. So I, what I wanted to ask you about a lot of was had to do with the visual guidebook or bible that you guys have established on right. the show and the perspective. 
and how it changes if you're going to shoot the same way but with Dom as as sort of the the, the POV character. Right. Did you when you were shooting those things? Did you make subtle adjustments to subtle. the subtle? Okay. Subtle. The the one thing is you you know you always want cohesion when you you can't and it would be corny in my opinion. It would be corny if like Dom gets like different beautiful lighting and you know a whole different look, you yeah. know saturated look and then and then you have a different look for another storyline but you do these subtle little hints and subtle different little compositions uh, um, and but keeping in the same tone of the, uh, we always wanted to keep the tone cohesive whether whether we're in uh, Dom's storyline or Elliot's storyline but we would always sort of give a different and also with music also with sound we, we would give different kind of cues to the different storylines yeah one of the things that makes this unique for all of us is that, you know, Chris and I have been talking about the season the whole way through. We know, as you've said, you've listened to us yes. the whole way through. Yes. And so now we have an opportunity to yes. have all our words come back in, in our face, but also yeah. give you a chance to respond to them. So one of the ones, and you can cherry pick if there are things that Go are ahead. particularly no, no, upsetting no. you. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, or, well, no, for, well can, let me just say up front. <laughs> I, and, I, and I mean this, and I, I really do mean this, because... I don't, I'm not upset that people no. are critical of the show. It, I mean, sh it, does it hurt my feelings that night when I'm listening or reading it? Sure. I mean, I mean, I would be inhuman if I were to say, oh, I don't care." You know. Obviously, I, I'm a person. I'm feeling. I want people to like. If they don't, oh, that sucks. But at the same time, if again, if they're you know intelligent people with insight and all of that. Like, I'd love to hear why, and then because this is a what's that Sorkin th uh, quote about? Like, you know, you surround yourself with the smart internet people. Is garbage. <laughs> that's his best quote. That's, that's a what's a one. podcast? Yeah. Another classic Sorkinism. Did he? Did he say? I just no, imagine oh, if you okay. asked him, he would. No, but it's the idea of surrounding yourself with smart people who disagree with you. Right. right. It's the team of rivals thing. That's you, right. you always yeah. love to bring. Up. <laughs> like, I do always love to bring. It up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why you're a little <laughs> obsessed with that. But um, anyway, <laughs> um, it's I love that. I love I I love getting. You know, I always want to be better, and so it's good to hear, good to hear the other well, side. Well, I think it's it. an incredibly healthy attitude that I think, like, I, I don't know if I was in the same circumstance, I'd be able to do it. But I also think one of the reasons why we're glad to have you especially is because you are a very good advocate for your choices and for your ideas, and even hearing you talk about them have convinced me uh, or turned me around on a couple of them. So one right. thing I wanted to talk about yeah. was... Um, my feeling about the, the shape of the season, particularly like the, the prison stuff and the reveal, um, at the time, my feeling was that it was going on for too long. Right. My feeling with it in the rear view mirror is that it was good to have that for the show and for the health of the show going forward because in a way, it allowed you to do these sort of like stress tests, not to use a financial <laughs> metaphor, but I just did, on the other characters and actors you had in the, in the repertory. Right. Because all of a sudden, you could see, or maybe you could just show to us, that Portia Doubleday can hold her own right. on a sh this show, that that character is an incredible resource, that this new character of Dom is worth, worth watching, that her show is a good show, that, that Angela's show, Darlene's show is a good show. Um, that's, as, as Chris was saying, just in terms of how a TV show needs to build outward, that's enormously valuable. And the experience that, that Elliot had on his own is valuable for the character, our understanding of him. But it was tougher to watch week to week. And, and so th this becomes the question, because I don't want it to be tough. I mean, I know that there are some writers and directors out there that are like, well, it's, it's tough because what he's going through is tough, and yeah. I want you to feel just as shitty as this person is <laughs> feeling right now. And you have to slog through that with, I, I, don't, I don't believe in that. I really, and, I, and, and honestly, it's a lot of, there are a lot of great movies that I love, but I will not watch again, yeah. because they're just tough to watch. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, Personally, my, my, my sort of taste in entertainment is I want it to be entertaining. I want it to say something. I want it to be, be about something. I want it to be cha challenging in, in the right aesthetic, artistic ways. But I definitely, I definitely want it to be entertaining at the end of the day. So when we go through those first few episodes, and I'm like, well, the, the honest thing is Elliot is not going to... Uh, for, Number one thing is I don't actually love plot. I think plot is like that shit you have to have the characters say to you, exposition, exposition. Who gives a shit? Like, you kind of know the need to get to the... I, honestly, it's, plot is an excuse for me to explore character mm -hmm. and to explore worlds and, 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 and to explore choices the, char the, the characters will make. But the plot itself, it's like, okay, so, you know, like, you know, the plot of, like, going and beating the bad guy, who, that's 
that's every fucking movie and every, but it's how they do it and what choices they make along the way right. that's interesting, right? So with Elliot, I knew from the outset that I, it was gonna be dishonest if he was if he was going to essentially shrug this robot thing off and jump back in it. Like he really needed to be introspective and go deep dive into himself. And really, honestly, if you know, putting yourself in his shoes, he's gonna wanna get rid of this thing. He's gonna want he wants to be normal. I mean, that's the thing yeah. he's been saying from the beginning of the of the show. So how do we dramatize that in an entertaining way and that will feel honest? And you know, we we talked to a lot to the psycho psychology consultant and we talked about the iterations. And those were the, those that's basically in terms of Elliot's storyline, those were the first few episodes. Now how do we dramatize that in an entertaining way? Well, we you know, you saw we had we have the Adderall on and he decides to basically overdose to get him, get rid of him. That doesn't work. Then we have like, you know, the the essentially like let's come to let's come to Jesus moment. Let's let's play a game of chess and just let's just battle it out. Let's just yeah. uh, battle the wills. When we watched that, when we're, when I pitched it, when I wrote it, when people commented, when they read, the one thing I'd say is this, are we too up our own ass here? Is this interesting? Are we saying something, is, is he evolving? And the answer always for me had to be yes. Obviously the react, so, you know, the, and, and again, it's always mixed, right? I mean, cause I know, I know what your reactions were and that, that was on the, I'm not getting anything out of this, and I'm not I'm not getting engaged out of this. You, you know, there were there was those that that were, and then there were those that cherry picked and said, "Well, that was engaging, but that's that we could have done yeah. done without." I, ultimately, I can't I can't that I can't do anything. I can't convince you to yeah. like something or be engaged in something that you you are not. Right. But we we you know all I can say is those were the choices were based on the fact that we were we found it engaging, we found it entertaining. I think that you know we talked earlier about this bubble. That people watch these shows in, and I was thinking a lot about this. And you know, I went back and rewatched the Prison Break episode from the first episode, and I was like, it's one of the best the episodes season. of yeah, first yeah. season. And it's like one of the best. That show. What? I've never seen that. Prison show. Break? Yeah, it's coming back. It's so you better catch good. up. It's no, the, from from the Prison Break episode. Oh, you were talking about my show. Yeah, I thought Robot. you were talking about. I honestly thought you were talking about. Oh Prison no, the we're Prison Break now. episode. <laughs> we're going to talk about other of shows. Season one of Mr. Yeah, Robot yeah, yeah, is yeah. one of the best episodes of television I can remember seeing. Yeah, it is. You're so wrapped up in it, and you can say like, oh. You know the plot, and I I totally understand what you mean intellectually, but you're really fucking good at it. So then when you see that happen, I think you're like you are basically taught. You're teaching your audience how to watch the yes. show, and they start to come to expect mm -hmm. a certain whether it's intensity. And that was kind of like I think the thing that I had the hardest thing was adjusting. Like you're saying, like I will never be angry at someone who's like this is the show I wanted to make. You know what I mean? I get I get pissed off when people make shows where like I think this is the show people want me to make. Right. But you were like I I knew the whole time that you were like this is the version of the show that needs to happen to grapple with the version of the show that I made in the first season. It's just that people got used to being like you could pull my hair out in 45 minutes, so that when you you do get a 12 minute well, Darlene it, and Elliot. But l but let me just say to that, which is. We were gonna. We knew in the room, and we did in this season. We knew we were gonna do that. Yeah. We were gonna do the plot stuff. Okay, the plot stuff. We'll get to that. I mean, that's that's all fun. But just like when you were talking about where we needed to broaden the mm -hmm. characters, we wanted to broaden the scope of what we could do. I mean, one of the and I, I'm not I'm not pivoting to Atlanta, but if you do want to talk about Atlanta, we <laughs> we'll can't because I do love Atlanta. I thought you were gonna say prison break. <laughs> <laughs> The secret text. I, do, I haven't informed. seen Prison Break. I do keep hearing Prison Break is good. So, uh, but anyway, regardless, like last a couple of weeks ago, you were talking about Atlanta. What, one of the things that you said it actually struck me because it literally was the thing I wanted to talk about, which is the elasticity of it. Yeah. Atlanta. Yeah. The, yeah. the fact that man, I will turn that. Uh, uh, I've only seen four, but every episode is like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, I have no idea what's going to happen to tonight. And there's only like, sadly, probably like, thirty shows. In the last 20 years, that you can say that. About. I mean, in in in, in most all of them are in the last 15 years. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. But and and we and and I felt like we were a show that we let's you know empower. I mean, that was a conversation. That was literally one of the points that we brought up in the room, which is let's do let's go for broke. Let's do that because we know we can do this. I mean, you know, but, but we want to do more. But I know? think this is the thing. This is where where we are with TV now begins to bump up against what TV used to be because TV, as groundbreaking as it is now, is still based on this relationship of expectation with an audience where, where it's a very intimate experience like people who fell in love with the first season have the thing that they love and they're like I want that again you know but, I, but I, and I want to experience that again whereas you're looking at it as an artist and saying 
I did the bender season, now I can do the hangover. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and that interests you, and but, you're going to chase that. But let me just say this. I don't think it's good to do it again. I don't think, oh. I would, I don't think this season, it may have been more liked. It may have been more like, mm -hmm. and then whatever. I can't, I can't know in hindsight. But I know for me, as a as a viewer too, because I'm looking at this as what, what do I want to see when I go home? Like, if I were to see season one, like what you guys pitched, you know, let's just do F. You know, he's now hacking F Corp for season two. Yeah, right. There's a new Shayla, and you know, th these are all. <laughs> Ter I'm sorry, terrible <laughs> ideas. That's right. Terrible <laughs> ideas. I wanted you to specifically rebut what we yeah. turned into last week because we caught ourselves on this podcast being like, wait, we are the cliched network exactly. executive. Exactly. We say, we're saying make the protagonist more likable, give what him if, a girlfriend. What if he's right. less of a robot? Yeah, what, <laughs> what, 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 happened, what is it about your show that turned us into these people that we rail uh, against? That, that I don't know. And what, what's interesting is I think we, I mean, in a weird way, um, I was actually talking to Noah Hawley about this because he watches the show, and he was telling me how, like, in the first season, you kind of touched a little this bit on the rabbit. Noah Hawley created Des Fargo, and yes, brilliant, brilliant, uh, both seasons, uh, you know, brilliant. Anyway, um, he he was like, you kind of touched on the rabbit hole. You, you wouldn't dip your toe into the rabbit hole in the first season, but it was, you know, mostly you kind of understood where it was right. going. And then in the second season, you were just like, well, no, we're going down deep down yeah. into the rabbit hole. And honestly, the plot then just became the little side things that were, oh, okay, yeah. we'll get to that. Um, I, I just thought that was more challenging, that was more interesting. And I think clearly we're, we're taking risks. And the, obviously the, you know, what can happen when you take a risk is you get a divisive reaction. And you know, one of the things was, was like, are we gonna squander this up? I mean, I've never made a television show before. I got a chance to make a television show. Am I gonna squander the opportunity to just please people and make sure that, you know, they get exactly what they're expecting. Hey guys, just want to tell you a little bit about Jaguar. We know it's a little rude to interrupt, but while we have your ear, let's have a brief conversation about manners. As the British like to say, manners make it the man. So it's no wonder that Jaguar's first ever compact sports sedan, the Jaguar XE, and their first ever SUV, the Jaguar F-Pace, are well-mannered. They both put you at ease the moment you enter, remain composed in almost any situation, and know when to make themselves heard. For the full Jaguar Guide to Manners, please visit jaguarusa.com. Thank you. Jaguar, the art of performance. Also wanted to tell you a little bit about our sponsor, Blue Apron. Not all ingredients are created equal. Fresh, high quality ingredients taste better and are better for you. So it's important to know where your food comes from. I've personally cooked with Blue Apron for a while now. I love it. I love the variety of ingredients they use. I love the ease of which meals are prepared. It brings me closer to people in my family to cook with them. Blue Apron has established partnerships with over 150 local farms, fisheries, and ranchers across the United States. And as a result, the seafood is sourced sustainably. Beef is raised humanely. They even use regenerative farming practices for their produce. Some of the meals available in September are eggplant and chickpea tangine with islander pepper, tomato, and couscous. Summer udon noodle salad with cherry tomatoes, corn, and summer sweet pepper. Check out this week's menu and get your first three meals free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash the watch. You will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com slash the watch. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Well, so one of the things that was interesting about this season, though, is I actually did identify with and invest in the very real stakes of the first season in terms of we're coming out of this sort of yeah. post-recession hangover. People are getting screwed mm -hmm. over left and right by the government. Here's a guy who's lost family members, whose friends have lost family members because of this sort of corporate mega complex that's destroying America. And he does something about it. And there was a real like relationship, I think, to real life there. And I think that the second season went so far out into not outer space, obviously, but like that's started. Three. What's that? That's, that's three. outer space. That's <laughs> space. Elliot X the moon. Mm -hmm. God, that's, we're that's, good. That's my next pitch. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> Call me USA. Look, Shayla's back. He hacks the moon. Yeah. Mr. Moonbot, let's go. Green light. Um, but the fact that you're talking about the rabbit hole, sometimes I think I felt like the light from the top of the rabbit hole was a little bit hard to see. Right. In terms of its relationship to, and maybe this isn't even you. This is this is. The toilet we just the world went dropped crazy? into, yeah. Right, right, right. But you know, when you're shooting this, when you're watching this, and then you're also watching what's happening in the world, how much does that stuff cross your mind? Does it? 
You know, it, 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 obviously with the first season, it was born from like the real world, right? Yeah. Like I'm watching, I'm reading, and I'm like, I need to make a, 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 a near right story about this. But in the second season, because we were already into it, I'm continuing it. And, and you know, like, look, the ele- uh, Trump becoming the Republican nominee happened while we were, I think, in the no, it was still, he was still, he was kind of winning. It was the primaries and we were still writing. But the problem is, is that, we couldn't let that affect us because we're in. We're now in our story. We, we're now we've begun it to then start adapting and start including Trumpisms. In, Plus, you know, the story the, is set in 2015. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so maybe by the fifth season. That's right. When they're on the President moon, Trump. looking at the smoking crater of America. <laughs> That'd be good. Um, but but to answer your question. What's crazy about that? Because I know I know your tastes a little bit. You know, yeah, read, team read, of rivals. Read, read a couple <laughs> yeah. team of rivals. <laughs> Just um, George Kearns Goodwin all day, every day. <laughs> to me, like abstract, to talk about, to tell stories in the abstract, to, to do things like what you guys kind of herald a lot of the half hour comedies of that what they are doing yeah. is they're going into these really weird, surreal, what we talk about with Atlanta or Louis or any of these things. There's a, like a real freedom in there that dramas tend to not have. Especially now, as they've become more formulaic. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you, you're, you're, you're expected to follow a plot. You're expected to either do something every week the same, which is those procedurals, or from season to season, you're expected to have a season arc, a season right, goal. Right. There's a and big bad at the there, end of it. There's always, and, and, and Breaking Bad, my, one of my, my favorite show ever, right? Sopranos probably up there too. Maybe they're neck and neck. Both of them kind of did that same thing where there was a big bad or a new big bad mm-hmm. every other season and a new level, um, which is great. But like how, like now we're here, right? And everybody expected us to do, kind of follow one of those models. Mm-hmm. But like, well, no, we want to do the thing that we're seeing all these other great shows doing. We want to do the thing that like, maybe I, I, maybe we go into the I just abstract. Think, I just think we're at this point where our ambition and hopes for TV are outstripping just the way we're watching it, you know, and we're not, because I, I was really struck by the fact that Chris and I, when we, we paused last week and we were like, wait, what are we saying? Sorry to go back to that, but yeah. like, what are we actually saying here? What do we want from these experiences? You know, we say we want this sort of creativity and ambition, and then when we get it, you know, and I think that one of the things that's admirable about the show is that you're willing to, to take the risk and not land everything that you put up into the air. Yeah. You know, but if we talk about season two of Fargo, like, I love the spaceship. I love that there is a fucking it. spaceship. I loved it. Because, because why not? And similarly, not? my favorite thing, non-ALF category of Mr. Robot season two is the Angela interrogation but scene. But you, you didn't love, now, now I'm curious, curious. And, and then honestly, because okay. I, I just want to understand, because I know you're in general, in general, like a fan of that stuff. You're, yeah, you know. of course. So what was it? I mean, I'm just, um, if I, I can ask. Felt it's, it's like, the tables have turned. Yeah. I felt like it was, too real. Like, I felt like the fact that it wasn't a dream made me angry. Hmm. I felt like the fact that it worked and that she walked out of there and she was like, I've been convinced. I went through this experience that if, I mean, honestly, obviously in the world of Mr. Robot, in any any number of things would have been the weirdest, craziest things that have ever happened to most people in their right. lives. But she goes through an experience <laughs> that she should be like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Like, was you, that a version of me in that room? Like, what? why was there, like, a, why was the door locked? Why is, is the fish not, dead? How did, she, how is, what is that person? Well, that gets explained. Yeah, all that stuff. Well, ran out of water. And then like, I feel why? like I didn't get. <laughs> it's Lester Literal over here. I just, I felt like. You and your logic. It played with dream logic in a reality. And uh, I think that that, and the fact that I got stuck in Beyonce traffic on the way home before I watched it, <laughs> had a lot to do with But it. that plays into, I think, a, some of the things we wanted to, to, to steer the conversation back to, which is Beyonce. the way that we are, which is about that for season three? Queen Bee, I have. <laughs> Lemonade, the majesty of that record. No, the, the way that we watch these shows. I still do not understand how Lemonade did not win. I, I, I mean. How it didn't win. I don't, it didn't win anything, right? Like, like it was nominated in, for all these Emmys. The Five Nine Hack, how it didn't. Oh, I was, oh at, the, at the Emmys. I was like, which, which <laughs> award ceremony are we talking about? Oh, it's like uh, Critics' Choice. No, the, the, it didn't, wasn't the it a visual Emmys? part of it? The, yeah. The, 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 yeah. Yes, I'm talking about the, the film. I guess it's, can, is it considered a film? I don't know. It was I don't considered even, a special. Who won instead? Like a, special for TV. I don't That's know. That's a really good question. I anyway, know some guys ahead. who did Sorry. an Emmy show, and they probably know. <laughs> but we don't have access to them right now. Um, I've derailed your point. No, no, it Please. was just that the, the way you can control many things about making the show and how you, you, know, how you want it to look, how you want it to feel, right. how you want to deliver it, but the way people watch it is still, 
um, not yeah. under control. And so that you know, and so I feel like when Chris and I talked the next day, his mood affected how he watched the show that right. night. Also, and a lot of people are experiencing that. There was it was also specific to Angela because I feel like Angela was somebody who went through. To me, Angela had a three-day blackout period too because right. I some of her transition to tight ponytail, like I and and like Ice Queen and doing what she's doing in this season was still a little murky for me, and I think that was why partially why I was just like, what is this? Right. Like, right. what are we doing here? Right. And but I, you know, I I think I ended this season with a much greater appreciation for the whole than I did when I was so going. That was my question. It. Were you making it for a week to week in your mind? Or are you making this ten now twelve hour film? Well, so let me ask you a question because you know I've been asked that question, and you know, is it better binged? Is it better week to week? How am I supposed to know that? Like, how am I even supposed to guess that? Well, because you watch TV. I do watch TV, but I I'll. It's it's weird. It, what's a show that's better binged than week to week? And I I could probably tell you I could still watch that show week to week. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't I don't really know the difference because but, uh, 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 I think part of it is mood. I think part it, of it is like you're putting together it, a, a state of being, right? Like so much of this show is so atmospheric that well, it the, almost the, felt abrupt to he, end it and start it. And here's here's probably the big uh, what I have heard is the commercial breaks, mm -hmm. like it, and because I don't cut I don't cut it with commercial breaks. They kind of do that later. They know you know do, you can't do that in front of Sam because Sam gets pissed off. Like they <laughs> disrupt me while I'm yeah. watching. I don't want to watch it with the commercial. So they just so. And I don't do that because I'm in it. I'm in the world, the music, the whole thing, the tone. It's very much to me like you got It's a complete experience. That's why Chris does the ad reads on this podcast. Got it. That's right. I'm in Which, by the way, really take me out of the mood. <laughs> See? The tone. But they also keep us here in this nice studio. That's right. But please, please go on. No, I'm, I'm just saying, like, I, I don't know how, how disruptive that is, but I also don't want to lean on that as an excuse. I have no, you know, you know it's, it, I've, I was talking about Empire Strikes Back. The other you know, with uh, some of the uh, when I was doing some of the interviews of postmortems, and um, and I, so I decided to Google it because I, in hindsight I, I I've talked to you about this in hindsight I was like hey, we kind of did like a little bit of an Empire Strikes Back here because yeah. there's the sister and you know and, and Luke is like yeah is often doing his own thing and um and 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 also the ending because I was also thinking because like that I couldn't talk about at the time but. The ending of Empire Strikes. Do you know, remember how that movie ends? Han Solo is frozen. Frozen in carbonite. You, Empire basically kicks everyone's ass, and Princess Leia is like, you know, basically fleeing. And you get told that Darth Vader is Luke's father, and his yeah, hands his hands cut off. Yeah, he's. In I the mean, hospital. it is yeah. the bleakest ending with a million cliffhangers, and it's still my favorite Star Wars movie. Yeah. So I go on Wikipedia. I'm like, just just curious because I, I had to make sure that that was the ending, and the first couple paragraphs I'm reading mixed mixed reactions on Empire Strikes Back when, when it first, was when it was it released. first released yeah which I was shocked because but, but do you even because, remember that because but isn't that because you don't know where you were going exactly yet. yeah and I think in a weird way maybe after Return of the Jedi you look back and you're like oh no that's better than the Ewoks right <laughs> I mean definitely was better <laughs> than the Ewoks yeah yeah for sure um but I but but I think the the appreciation I had for that movie kind of the fact that they don't have all the an you don't have all the answers. You have questions, and you, it, it is darker and then murkier, and it is more introspective. All those things, I think, made me appreciate. I, I, I mean, I don't ever remember disliking Empire Strikes Back, but I was kind of shocked to hear that people were mixed on it at the time. But is, isn't this indicative of this weird um, state you find yourself in, where you you know you finish the season of television, but that is part of a journey that you have plans for? Yeah. You have you have answers that you're not going to tell us. You have ideas, and you have plans, and you have different tones that you want to play with. But you have, but we've reached this rel at this point almost artificial segmentation of right. your story, and right. you have to sit down and explain it. Well, and it's weird too that pe I, and personally as a viewer, when people are like, "I want, I need answers," and if I don't have answers, well, I don't like it. You know what I mean? To to a certain extent, I understand the frustration because if at a, a certain point, if you're not getting any answers and you're just like totally in the dark about everything, right? And then, then you're just too untethered to any to to, inv to invest in anything. That I get, but obviously I think we dole out answers. I mean, even in the finale, I mean, I remember reading all these articles. The five things Mr. Robot must answer in the finale. The eight things, here are the eight you, big you questions. Notes? And I'm like, well, okay, let me, so I- I'm I'll like, do what I can. I, I fill it out like an Us Weekly survey, <laughs> yeah. you know, okay, do, okay, do we answer? And we pretty much answered 95%. 
But guess what? We also asked more questions. Yeah. Those answers led to bigger questions. Well, no, I need the answers to those two on top of the ones that yeah. you're going to ask. And it's like, well, that's not that's not the show. That's not a mystery. That's not, you know, storytelling is all about what you want to know. What, what we want you to want to know what happens. I can next. only imagine how frustrating it must be to read stuff like that. And just somebody who produces a lot of it, I apologize. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I think that that echoes something that Lindelof used to say when he was doing tor towards the end of Lost about what people needed to know and what was going to be an answer. But another movie that you've brought up a couple of times in the sort of post-finale interview process has been Jackie Brown, right? Yeah. So you're talking about how Jackie Brown, you've got the last act of Jackie Brown, you have no idea whose team she's on. Right. But you do know that she's on Jackie's team. Right. And that is the difference, yes. right? That is like the main difference when you're watching Mr. Robot is you have like, you're not entirely, you have to know that Slater is an extension of his personality. Right. So in some ways, there is a part of his brain that wants to blow up a building. Correct. Right. And that is, I think, what people, when people are like, I need answers, it's almost what they're saying is, I need the motivation, or I need to know the truth about who this person is. I need is. to know what he wants. Yes. Right, right. And, uh, and that's a very good question, right? Because motivation's big, it's, it's huge in storytelling. It's the thing that you can latch mm -hmm. on to, right? And that to me, like, one of the big things we talk about in the writer's room is, well, what if you take that motivation and, ma and make it the front and center? Two different, two different things are colliding within one person. I mean, literally, you have, and 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 he and and there's mystery around what what does he want? Where what is what is he aware of at any given moment in terms of what his other side wants? And then to play the psychology of it, because a lot of the show is about psychology, is what does that mean that he wants to blow up a building? What does that mean that he actually got shot and asked Terrell to shoot him? Yeah if something got in the way. Those things happen. That was a person that asked another person to do that. What I mean, that to me is where it can get really fun. Clearly, it's... <laughs> fun is a way of putting well, it. Well, well, fun as a creator. Yeah, of fun. course. Well, yeah. no, not even just as a creator. For me as a viewer, I can now sit there and be like, well, wow, that motivation is it's not surface level. Right. There's subtext to right. it. Like, uh, you know, Jackie Brown, she wants the money, right? Yes. Clearly, that's, that, and that's great, and that's clear, and, and it's, it's, an, it's a fun ride to go on. But if Elliot wants to take down society, and that means he'll commit suicide, and he's got this other side of his brain, and like, it's almost suicidal, it's almost crazy, and he's partly in the dark about it. What is, what is all, what is underneath all of that means? It's just Do you know what I mean? Hard. Absolutely. It's, to make TV out of that. It's very difficult, it's very challenging. Yeah. And I should, I could I could say well, let's not do that then. <laughs> well, I mean it's really breaking news on this podcast. Oh my god. That sounds too hard. Let's go to the Yeah, movie. yeah, let's go <laughs> let's do the easy route. You yeah. know what I mean? And but 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 I but obviously that loses people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That will lose people. That's the risk. So what So this season was is over now. It's unprecedented in a lot of ways what you did. You directed every episode. You did this. As you said right. to me and you said to others, you felt like that was the easier choice because you would be, you would have been laying right. awake wondering what people would have been doing to your work anyway. Right. Um, but you did it in this very specific, very exacting time crunch. You know, you, you delivered the episodes that were, you, I think it was broken as 10, it aired as 12, technically. What have you learned from this, this season that you're pivoting into next season? And I mean that on two levels, both in terms of what did you learn from making the show the way you made it this year, and then, if anything, from the reaction, specifically to Chris's criticisms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, Chris is. Let me address Chris's criticisms. <laughs> I love this podcast. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing. Um, because I mean, even just going back to what we just talked about with the motivation, it's it's still it. That to me is something like I want to calibrate. I want to understand because obviously I, I find you. I respect you. Thank you. I respect you, Chris. Um, Not me. <laughs> uh, no, I mean that goes without. I'm saying. an after show host. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, if you look at it like you know, in, you, there's one thing that you kept saying. That I'm very tempted in season three to just okay, we'll do that. Um, and yeah, the one thing you could call my my team. We'll <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you points. Um, no, the one thing you kept saying is, well, uh, what, well, I forget the word. You true north. What's my true north? Yeah. What's wh where are we going? What, what am I? Where am I? Eye, where's my eye supposed to focus on? I'm not doing an impression of you. That's just that's I was just that's um, pretty accurate. That's pretty good. <laughs> um, and so I, I remember we made the choice deliberately not to do that. Right. We were like, isn't it cool to decrypt that, to kind of in, in ep, from episode to episode sort of decrypt, oh, this was the goal, and stage two was the thing at the end. Because there was something 
very hackneyed, to be honest with you, about announcing that in the beginning and then sort of following. Through. I just felt mm -hmm. like I've seen that a million times. Right. I feel like that's that, that just seemed like a, a weird trope. So when in thinking about season three, I thought about that. I thought about, well, should we do that? Because I know, I know, I know where we're gonna, and like I said, I know where the markers are. So do we announce that in the beginning so people have something to latch onto? But then, but then I get, I, I watch these other amazing shows and they, they I, I'm like, I can't, and I'll, I'll bring up Atlanta. Sure. What it, I guess he's trying to give Paperboy a rap career? Like, is he trying to him, man manage him? I have watched four episodes of that show and I have not, I've seen maybe two minutes of that storyline being serviced. I think and they're, that, just, they're just slow. I think, I think they're just slow pitching. You're just one. you're just playing. I mean, with, you're playing well, with a different chemistry set, though, because you're. He's also not trying to destroy Paperboy's career. <laughs> Whereas, just like if you were making it, that's he might point. actually. Oh, there might be like the two sides of it. And I think that that's what I say. True North. It's not like I'm like lay it out for me. I'm just like. Where, I, see now, actually, because like, the more we talk about it, the more I've thought about it. The more I feel like. So when I watched last night, I was like, man, stage two is pretty vengeful and brutal it's, like it's, it's, it's like pretty, actually just very it's like old, it's old fat it's terrorism it's, 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 we it's, recognize it's, as terrorism and by the way in light of what happened in the last weekend i was like wow this is this is crazy like yeah, yeah. and it, and it, and you know i think i think i read some reviews where they were like oh it's just blowing up pay. no this is people are in there yeah yeah know? and i was it's a bombing that's why when you see the blackout at the end of the episode i was like oh jesus christ but it, the more i think about it the more i thought about it since then i was like it kind of works that if you are dealing with someone who is unhinged, who does have a, a multiple personalities, who for part of this season, we've been wondering whether or not Wellick was a, a function of, of, you know, like a projection right, of his personality, right, right. that this irrational cruelty and, and, and these inexplicable acts that he might not have a true north. That right. he, and if you're doing a show from a perspective of somebody like that, it's not going to feel like, he obviously just wants to erase all debt. That's the whole point of the show, right, is that we want right. to get back to a point where we don't, aren't all owned by companies. Right. Right. Well, I just think it also gets complicated, right? Life gets in the way, and for Elliot, obviously it gets very complicated, because he's obviously dealing with these with these issues, internal and extra, like uh, the things that he's set, set in motion or the things his other half was set in motion. But I think also about, I, just to, again, because I want to harp on Atlanta, because I do love that show, but sometimes it's about taking your girlfriend out yes. and having and yeah. just trying to afford fish at market price. But was it fish? It was, know, it was, it was he got the fish at market fish. price. Yeah. Yeah. But because season one of Mr. Robot ended with this global hack, Elliot can't take Shayla out for market price fish <laughs> anymore. That's also because she's dead in the trunk of a car. That is true. Yeah. So you can't, it, I don't, but is I there room? I want my cake and eat it too. That's yeah. what I mean, you want to find those pockets. You want yes. to have room for the things. Yes. And maybe maybe those idiosyncratic moments end up being a fish as slowly dying. As soon as dying. bar and girls start right. taking e-coin, we'll be good. <laughs> That's a really good point. You guys caught on to that pretty quickly, the e-coin e thing. The e-coin thing? Yeah, the currency. What, what else did people, did, okay, people. There's one thing that people have not caught on to, which I, I, I mean, it's one of those things where I'm like, I'm telegraphing it, you know, like, and they're all going like to tell me it's his dad. Like <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that that kind of thing. But, um, but yeah, no one's caught on to it. You don't want to break news no, here. No. You want to give us that one? Well, this is, that's, this no is actually Back to the Future Four. God, I want to ask about that one because that's really exploded. That's our friend Zemeckis, Sarah. She's... I'm I'm available for Back to the Future. <laughs> Can you confirm or deny at this moment that whether our friend Sarah Lewin's theory that Elliot is Terrell's son, grown up? And there's time warping going on. I just for the sake of Sarah, yeah, I'm neither confirming or denying it. That's she awesome. will be thrilled by that. <laughs> but the music choices in that episode were just because you love the movies. I do love those movies. I mean, Back to the Future, Back to the Future Two specifically. That's a that's a really interesting choice. Oh, can I ask you to? Yeah. Because when I, we talked about this last week, Chris claimed that he had never heard of this. When you were, I can't believe you've never seen it. It's just one of those. I, I know it. All the I same know age. Like the surfboard. Did you have the hoverboard rumor in your school too that they were real? I don't remember that, Andy. I gotta be honest. It's with like you. one of the formative experiences of my life. Stuff, man. <laughs> Look, we're this is a this. Berenstain thing. Maybe you know. Yeah, I remember them that way too. <laughs> um, I guess uh, only other thing that I, that I wanted to make sure we got to was. Did just, we get it? We got to. We, we did we, a we lot. We covered a lot. I feel yeah, like we I'm did a lot yeah. of legwork. We're almost done. I promise. No, I'm please, please, no. Yeah, I'm having fun. The thing that my biggest takeaway, though, and I mentioned it briefly, I just wanted to get your your thoughts on it, like. I think the most amazing thing that directors can do is not just casting good actors in parts, but casting actors and then giving them opportunities to do things that 
other people have not seen them do, yeah. that they're suddenly capable of, maybe yeah. even surprising the performers themselves. And I keep coming back to Portia. I don't know if she was, conf she was probably confident, but no one who saw the first season of the show knew Angela would go in that direction. Right. And I don't know if anyone knew Portia was going to pull that stuff off. And she was the MVP of the season to me. It was an amazing she performance. She was amazing, yeah. When did you know that that was possible? How far did you feel comfortable pushing her? And how quickly did you realize, oh, she can do this? Well, at the end of the first season, when, I, when we did that shoe store scene, yes. and I was like, and she did that scene. I, I still watch that scene. It's like a fascinating scene purely from an actor's point of view because I'm watching her and I cannot read. I don't think I intended for her to be that ambiguous about it, but I could not read whether she liked this or, um, or, or she felt shame of, man, I really just was condescending to this poor yeah. shoe salesman. And no, I got to remember who I am. I'm the nice. And um, she was just right in the middle. I mean, she really was. She wasn't one way or the other. Because she could have played it like a total, like, you know, mm -hmm. go get my Pradas and, you know, get out of here. Be gone with you. And she, but she didn't, she really didn't do it any, either way. And that really informed the second season because that was the whole Jackie Brown trigger right. for me. That was like, oh, we got, because that movie is genius in hiding the motivation. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess we cleared that up. She, yeah. we, the, <laughs> motivation, cleared the motivation. We, motivation was clear, but who she was going to play to get to that, I mean, right. it, it, it was genius in hiding that. And I, it was such a great storytelling choice that when I knew that Portia was like, wow, she's in the zone for that, yeah. I was going to exploit the hell out of that. What? What do you derive the most pleasure from in making the show after after doing it for two years? Is it things like obviously Rami winning the Emmy the other night was amazing. Um, you know, the adulation and excitement coming off the first season to the second right. season must have been a lot of fun. But I wonder, having spoken to you and watching the show, do you collect those moments? Because as a filmmaker, you're always chasing the next one. So you yeah. look back on the shoes and you got the shoot, you nailed the shoe scene. <laughs> you think about the karaoke moment. You're like, I got that moment. Yeah. Or I got that right. incredible right, shot. Right, right, right. Is, is it, it, does it become a collection of those shots and moments to you, or is it more cumulative? I think it's more cumulative because I'm always because this isn't. Um, I don't think about it in seasons. I I think about it in. The, t the, the, the the two pieces of the you know the, the end the game where we're yeah exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we're not even done you know finishing writing the novel or whatever finishing the movie or whatever and it's almost like you're getting all this like feedback of like oh that was cool well that wasn't and but I'm not done yet let me let me fi you know let me finish so in a weird way it it I um I try not to get distracted by it's it. it's a fascinating divide between the creation of the perception of it. The, the, from like the way we're experiencing it, the way people are processing television, to the way it must be like, I have like a three, four, five season arc that I'm working on. This is only, we're not even halfway through yet. Right, yeah. right, right. Well, and, but, but, but also, I, I don't know if a lot of TVs made that way. I no. think they do think no, about no, yeah. it as enclosed I'm sure it's week to week stories. for a lot of people. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah, 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 yeah. So before we, we let you go, I feel like you've been so generous with your time to us. What would you like to talk about? Do you want to take us to task for anything particular? Anything else we got wrong? Yeah, you like you Designated want Survivor? Anything else? Yeah, you want to talk <laughs> I haven't about? watched Designated Survivor. Is it good? You guys both watched it. I, I, I haven't listened to the John Favreau thing. I haven't listened to that. Wow. Either. Walk off the set right now. <laughs> we watched all of your shows. I know, seriously, I watched We Mr. watched Robot every episode. Night. <laughs> you just skipping around? Wait, wait. I, would I, would, I don't want to take you to the ask on, on anything, but I do want to know, like, because you guys get all the goodies, you know, and I haven't found a... Tons. I, get a lot so of I've got Atlanta. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've got better things. I, I like better things. Okay. Um, but what, where are the dramas? So there's. Did you, did you like Night of? Did you watch Night of? I love Night of. Night of. I I, I, I did disagree. With we're going to talk about this next week, but I am I'm pretty obsessed with Gamora right now. Is that good? It is the darkest thing I've ever seen on television. I think. And it's great. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's my homework. It's kind of. It is. It is. I would describe it almost as rewarding okay. homework. Okay. All right. I'll add that. To the I, list. I'm not like ever like boy. I'm really glad. I'm, I, I'm gonna. I mean, but but it. easy doesn't sound like a drama to me, right? It's, no, it's like it's, like it's, it's, it's half it's hour like installations, and I'm excited it's, about it's, that. It's, but it's, comedy's I, where it's at right now. Half I hour's know. Where this it's is at. this is what's sad about drama is that. Um, and I but, I, but no, no. I mean, like I love the comedies, but I really wish I, I want there to be like that that drama I can sink myself, you know, sink my teeth into, you know? I think, that, but it's cyclical. I mean, I think that people were getting frustrated with what drama's being samey, and now they all, all the creative energy is going to comedies, and now, you know. Let me ask you a question, because you, I know you didn't, Horse and Pete. Yeah, I couldn't get, I couldn't get through it. I mean, you, that, first of all, I should tell to our listeners, say to our listeners. This, that this, when, by the way, listeners, 
an amazing show. One, probably my favorite drama of the year. When I gotta we, be honest with you. When, when you but arrived but that was, but that on set was... for Hacking Robot, episode one, <laughs> yeah. you told me that the only thing you wanted to talk about Horace and Pete. on USA's air after your own premiere was Horace and Pete. I mean, Horace and Pete was that experimental, original, inventive For, for week me, to it week. became, and maybe this is also a factor of how I have to watch TV or the amount that I was having to watch, it was something that, and remains something that I admired, but took, didn't take enough pleasure out of to continue once my professional obligations to it were over, which right. is a terrible way to think about this. Right. But I would love to see the Laurie Metcalf monologue. I bet so it's you didn't amazing. Even get that far. I made it. That's three. I made it two. I, I, I think I think you should watch. It. I think it's a great show. I think it's I think it's so underrated. I was I was a little bummed they didn't get uh, uh, as much as much love as some other shows. And I honestly I hope he does another season. But I honestly think Louis is to me that's I mean if if it if it if if there's any singular vision on TV yeah. film wherever it's it's Louis C.K. He's he's brilliant. Off the charts for me. Well, he also he does he does every part of it. I mean, he does, yeah. He writes and honestly, and, and there's something because sometimes it doesn't work for me. Like I'll watch it, whatever, and it yeah. doesn't work. But that but, that feeling you're talking about, where you don't know what you're gonna get. When yeah. You're I find it more forgiving in the half hour format. Like there are episodes of Louis that I dislike, and there are episodes of Louis that I think are some of the best things I've ever seen on TV. And for some reason, I roll with it because but, they're but, 30 minutes long. But aren't they? Well, but even Horse and Pete, some of the episodes were like, okay, I'm not sure. I don't know what I got. And it was 40 minutes long or whatever. But it's so worth. It's so worth those it, moments it's, it's to get the it's, rewards. It's an indictment of, those great of my up. impatience because I'm sitting here saying, <laughs> I agree, everyone that I respect liked it. I agree that it is probably good, and yet I have not right. done this. This right. is also could be the Please long. Please revisit it. It could be the long tail of me not having to watch everything anymore because I'm not this doing is, that anymore. Yeah, so now I'm just like I don't have to just watch airplane you. movies. Just airplane movies yeah. all the time. Apparently, movies are pretty good sometimes. <laughs> I didn't know that. Have you seen a movie you like recently? I'm trying to think. What, what's been out recently? Don't look at me. I haven't been on a plane in six weeks. <laughs> I, I saw Sully. Okay. I liked Sully. Okay. It's fun. It's fun. Did you guys watch Sully? It wasn't. It, I'll, I'll watch it in a year. Yeah, I, I, I did. But, but no, actually, I will never like watch Tom, that on an Tom airplane. I like Sully. <laughs> the worst ever airplane yeah. movie. Yeah, I also liked that that was, I mean, weirdly. You guys saw Snowden. I haven't seen I saw Snowden. 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 Yeah. You have not? Mm. Yeah, I saw it. And it was. I did not like it. Well, I mean, it's it, everything I knock about hacking. Mo- or movies about hacking. I thought um, you meant hacking robot. No, I mean like. You want to criticize the, 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 the No, <laughs> you were amazing. And is that is that what this is all about? Yes. This is Andy, <laughs> do you guys do a podcast you did a about great me? Job. Thanks, you guys. did an amazing yeah. job. Affirmation. No, uh, how we'll let you go after this, but it is remarkable that considering the amount of work that you had and like your life was just divided into like these ten minute increments of right. you were editing every episode until yeah, you yeah. finished like two weeks ago basically yeah. right before the finale and you're about to go back into it. You were still finding time to consume and enjoy culture. I love it. Yeah. I love it because I think it teaches me. You know, and the, the whole this whole thing. It's like, it's what I said earlier about not squandering this opportunity. Because I know that when the per, whenever I turn on a TV show, I want whoever's behind that, whatever or project that they're putting on, to fucking blow my mind. Oh, you know what's great? Fleabag. Fucking. I completely re- agree. Fucking great. And they take chances and, t- and they take risks. And sure, you might get shit on by critics. Not I this one. But you, I love that show. <laughs> but you still do them. And that's and it's all worth it because you get these amazing inventions. And a great way to tease that Phoebe's on the podcast next week. Next Wednesday. Oh, is she? She was here yesterday, yeah. She's amazing. Watch Fleabag on Oh, Amazon. my God. I've only a, seen like three episodes. I have amazing. a last question that I don't know if you're going to be able to answer. So Empire Strikes Back, Jackie Brown. I know you talked about Usual Suspects. All films that kind of helped shape the second season. Yeah. Give, oh, me, give, oh, me some, for, give me some for, homework for the, for the third. For the third. Because everyone, everyone has to take you to your next interview standing up now. They're, you know, they're biting their nails. I, I can't say, and, here's, and, and I'll be honest with you, here's the reason why. Because I actually, it kind of comes to me in hindsight. Okay. Like, it would I don't, be so I don't dope if in. you were like Blues Brothers. <laughs> yes. Stripes. <laughs> <laughs> Can we just tell people that? Like, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's Stripes. <laughs> Worst Season case scenario, three, people old. watch Fleabag and Stripes. <laughs> and Horace and Pete. And then you get to make some There you three. go. All right, Sam, awesome. you have been a good friend is, to the pod. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks so much for coming by, man. This was great. This is, I mean, guys, I'm a fanboy. I don't know if you know. I love this pod. The third chair. This is good podcast that we did today. This was good. I feel like this was good podding. Third chair is always open to you. I know you have a lot of free time. Is this, is, can I, this is me. That's, yeah. that's Sam's chair. But is Phoebe going to be? No, I, I, that happened already. That happened oh. yesterday. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, don't worry about it. Oh, you guys. 
Yeah, there's a whole there's time this thing shifting, you can do in post production. <laughs> reality bending. Let me tell you thing. about it. This podcast has no true north. <laughs> All right, this has been an amazing experience. Sam Esmail on the watch. Congratulations on season two. Thank Thanks you for guys. joining us, man. Thank you guys.